So um, thank you for joining. This is our full session if you have, um, of the series that we've been delivering. And this today is going to give you the opportunity to um, hear from two of our tutors who are going to give you an introduction to two of the uh, master's level modules from part of the Diploma in Advanced Primary Care Management. Sorry, not the Diploma in Advanced Primary Care Management. I've got that on a roll. We've got another qualification, the one we're talking about today, which is the Diploma in Healthcare Business and Finance. You're not on the wrong call. Um, so if you've missed any of our previous sessions um, on our other modules, you can actually view those on the One NHS Finance uh, website. My name is Steph Brown. I'm Head of Healthcare Business um, Development at HFMA, and I'll be chairing today's session. Um, so, um, for your information, we're going to hear today from Ian Corsley and Paul Miller. Now, um, they are two of our academy tutors. Unfortunately, neither of them could be live with us today. So, they've actually recorded their presentations for us. Um, if you have got any questions specifically around these two modules, then um, would be a good idea to put them in chat or after the session, drop Becky an email um, and she will send them across to the tutors um, for their replies. If you've got any general questions or queries about today about the qualification, um, either myself or my colleague Nick, who's joined us on the call, will be able to hopefully answer your questions. Um, if your sound or visuals drop out, again, don't worry during the session. Um, it, the, these sessions are recorded and they're available again on the One NHS Finance shortly. Um, as you've already got your um, camera turned off, we're good to go. So I think without any further delay, Becky, let's, um, let's hear from our first person. I think we've got Ian first on how finance works in the NHS. Thanks. Hello, I'm Ian Crossley. I'm going to talk about uh, how finance works in the NHS, one of the qualifications. So this module is an opportunity to examine the financial and business systems using health and social care and consider how they can be changed to deliver better value for patients and for the taxpayer. And looking at the barriers that, that get in the way of making things happen. And this is a course about finance and business systems. It's not an accountancy course. So we're not looking at spreadsheets and numbers. We, we aim to explore the myths and stories that surround how NHS finance works. Why money in the public sector seems to be somehow different from money in your pocket. So before we get on to the course itself, a bit about me. So I'm Ian Crossley. I was a finance director in NHS and accountable officer, mainly working in the north of England. I'm a chartered accountant and a qualified coach and mentor. My first degree was from Emmanuel College in Cambridge, and I did my MBA at Lancaster University Management School. In terms of my work with the qualifications, I'm a course tutor, particularly on this course. Uh, I'm an assessor at the two levels, so the intermediate level and the master's level. I am a content writer, so I've written quite a lot of qualifications on many of the bite science courses. I'm also an HFMA coach and mentor and I work with the Skills Development Network. So you, you may have seen some of my uh, webinars. So why study this module? Yep. Why, how does finance work in the NHS? Well, we're trying to answer the question, how best to provide healthcare free at the point of delivery? Because we, we have a business model, which is we're gonna collect revenue through taxation, we then allocate that resources somehow fairly and equitably to maximise health gain for everybody. So the question is, is there a best way to do this? And if there isn't, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the different systems and options? So if you think of it as, as this nice picture of a theatre, the taxpayer and the patients want to see healthcare delivered free at the point of delivery. How do you organise the front office to do that? The healthcare providers. How do you then work those together in terms of integrated care systems, primary care networks? How do you commission? How do you work with local authorities? How's all that supported from the back office in terms of NHS England and the CQC? How does this model work? So we look at in terms of how the money flows. So looking at how the money flows from the treasury through NHS organisations and into primary care. We look at the different business models. Who does what? Why do they do it? Which models have been tried before? Which ones have worked best? What, why are we changing things? We look at the policies and the financial and business frameworks. So we're looking at how things are structured around neighbourhoods, places, integrated care systems. How do we structure and work with providers? 
everything from GP practices to primary care networks, through the trusts, through the way they were brought together into care providers. What are the advantages and disadvantages of these current systems? How do, how do they interact with each other? How do you overcome the barriers to make things happen? Now, this is, the NHS is a very complex environment. Um, so the question is, can one financial system and one business system fit everything at once? You know, can you apply the same systems in management teams and divisions within organisations? How do you make an organisation work together as a provider, whether it be a trust or a GP practice? How do you then bring those together into larger groupings, provider groups, primary care networks? How do you get those to work together across the integrated care system? How do you work at place? How do you work at neighbourhood? How do you get the money to flow? And then how about the Department of Health and Social Care? What about NHS England? What about local authorities? Do they work in the same way? So how can you make the system work and what compromises you need to make to make it work best? So that's what we're looking at. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we look at the national international context. So what pressures does the NHS face? How does it respond to those? What are other countries doing? How do you resource healthcare provision? So how do you pay for mainstream services? How do you maintain them? How do you pay to change services? How do you build new things? How do you build new hospitals? Who pays? How do you structure the way care is provided? What, what are the different care models? How do you pay providers? How do you reimburse them? You know, are there different methods? How do you plan? How do you plan short term? How do you plan long term? How do you plan to make decisions? How do you link all that into into any care systems? Is it even possible to do it? What are the benefits and drawbacks of working in this way? Then we look at how do you deliver value? How do you even define value? You know, what is good? What's the best place to put your resources? For example, is it better to invest in primary care or social care? How can you tell the difference? We look at how do you make the system more effective and efficient? How do you control costs? How do you reduce waste? And we know that the uh, World Health Authority organization thinks 20% of the world's resources are wasted on health. How how can this be? And we look at risk management. How do you manage risk? So that's how the module is structured. In terms of why should you look at this? Why study how finance works in NHS? Well, in terms of, for you, you've got a unique opportunity to study the whole NHS system, which is not available in many places. You get the opportunity to apply the practical policy frameworks and you get to look at the different sorts of finance and business models. And I say, this is not an accounting course, we're looking at business systems. In terms of what we expect of you, well, we expect you to have a, a working knowledge of the NHS and a broad awareness of public sector policy changes, uh, although we do provide a lot of information and background to, to bring you up to speed. This is a master's level qualification, so we do expect you to be open-minded. We expect you to be able to accept that others might not see things in the same way that you do, or see that your solutions as beneficial, and particularly to accept that the NHS is not broken and it can't be fixed. There is no such thing as the perfect health system. They all have different advantages and different advantages and disadvantages. So there's no right way to deliver healthcare. At the end of the module, there's an assessment, um, and this gives you opportunity to look at your your local economy and practically apply some of the learning by looking at a significant local service change. For example, that could be how you're establishing an integrated care network or how you're setting up primary care networks or integrated care providers. So working with stakeholders to look at what they're trying to do, how the system is constraining what they're doing and examine the current business model and then look at ways of improving that business model. So it actually deliver what you want it to deliver. And obviously, because this is a level seven course, we also expect you to look at what have you caused to happen by doing this? What new constraints have you brought in because of the changes you recommend? 
because I say there is no perfect health system. So how does, this, how does the module work? Well, it's a 17 week study period. You get pre-reading and preparation and introductory session to bring everyone up to the same speed. So everyone's got the same background information. We do weekly academy live sessions and supported group topic discussions. You get full time tutor support. You get the opportunity halfway through to do a, a, a formative assessment, which is to test your ideas out for your full assessment with the uh, tutors. We provide study breaks for you to uh, relax a bit and also to catch up. And then I'd say there's the end of module assessment. Hello, I'm Ian Crossley. My name is Paul Miller. I'm the tutor on Tools to Support Decision Making, otherwise known as L703. Uh, and uh, I'm explaining today what the course is about and a little bit about me and the benefits that you could get from participating in this course. So what is Tools to Support Decision Making about? It's very simple. Have you ever thought that your life is just the accumulation of the decisions you've made? But do you ever think about how you make decisions? This could be decisions in, in work, in your personal life. So this module is about teaching decision making as a life skill. The module uh, covers uh, a series of, of weeks and I tutor on 11 tutorial sessions. Uh, there's an introduction to the module. Then there's a decision making week, which is an introduction to decision making. What is decision making and various concepts around decision making? We then in the in the talk week number two, look at information systems and decision making and the importance of information and how information impacts on the decisions we make or the lack of information can impact on decisions we make. In week three, we look at the primary sources of comparative data because comparative data uh, that's basically comparing apples with pears or apples with apples can actually help us make decisions. Is this better than the other? Is this car better than that car? Should I open this hospital or that hospital? Community services or primary care services? In week four, we look at the importance of compiling and presenting information because people make decisions. But if the information is not presented to them in an appropriate way, it's very difficult to make a decision that actually is a good decision. So it's really important that we compile and present information properly. In week five, we look at performance indicators and benchmarking because performance indicators or targets are a particular key tool of decision making, particularly in the NHS. There isn't an NHS strategy that does not come with its associated targets and performance management regime or that we strive to improve our performance through benchmarking. So we look at benchmarking and performance indicators as tools to support and aid decision making. In week six, we look at service transformation and governance. Uh, in particular, integrated uh, care systems are looking at changing the services uh, that they provide to improve the health of the population. But what tools to support decision making do we use in service transformation and governance, be they project management or business case tools? which leads into week seven business planning. So business cases and the importance of business cases and other concepts around business cases as tools to help us support and improve decision making. Because if we don't make the right decision as reflected in a structured tool like a business case, then we're not going to be really improving the health of the population. In week eight, we talk about the ethical and professional considerations of uh, tools to support decision making. Now, this is particularly important uh, with the rise of social media and the use and the misuse of information. So there have to be some professional boundaries around the decisions that we make and the way that we make them. In week nine, we talk about negotiating and managing internal and external relationships. Uh, you might be able to uh, have the right information, present it in the right way to can make a convincing argument. But if the relationships, both internal and external to your organisation, are not good, then it's very unlikely that a good decision will be made. So we touch on uh, relationships 
uh, and getting the groundwork and the preparation in place to improve decision making. Then in week 10 and 11, uh, we sometimes combine these, but this is really around preparation for the, uh, the for the final assessment. This is looking at uh, a case study and it's reviewing what we've learned in the module so far and it's preparing you for the final uh, assignment. So in a nutshell, tools to support decision making is about uh, improving your decision making abilities, teaching decision making as a life skill. And there's a series of structured uh, tutorial topics that cover all aspects of this and the aim is to improve your decision making. So why me and how can I help you as the tutor on this course? So I've nearly 40 years of uh, NHS experience. I started working in 1983 in NHS Wales and I moved to England in 2008. Uh, I first became an NHS board member as director of finance in 1994 and since then I've had 28 years continuous experience on NHS boards. 16 years as a director of finance, five years as a chief executive, four years as a director of finance and after retiring from full-time work in 2018, four years as a non-executive director. I'm in my last week as a non-executive at Salisbury NHS Foundation Trust, and I start working for the Bath, North East Somerset, Swindon and Wiltshire Integrated Care Board as a non-executive from the 1st of July 2022, which really reflects the importance of decision making in systems. Uh, finally, a little bit more about me. So, finally, a little bit more about me. I'm also an associate for the Jersey Audit Office, leading on the health audits, and I'm an executive coach, business trainer, and consultant. So, I have a very broad range of experience, and hopefully, I'll bring uh, to the table when I tutor this course and bring to life the read material that you'll be reading. I've also got considerable HFMA experience, uh, and if you're looking at the slides, uh, you can see that HFMA experience. But uh, really most important to me, I was awarded a HFMA Honorary Fellowship all the way back in 2004, which actually was really a highlight of my career. In terms of the course structure, uh, I've gone over the sort of topics of individual things we'll be talking about and, and uh, teaching. But there's a introduction and familiarization session. I've talked about the 10 individual topics. Uh, we have a weekly online academy live session, and that's basically the tutorial session that I lead on. Uh, most sessions cover one topic of the module, uh, and this class about an hour and a half. And so my tutorial is tend to be about half past seven till nine o'clock. Uh, we talk about uh, the, the, the material that you'll have read, we have group discussions, there's an opportunity for reflective uh, learning and discussions and questioning. And again, as I've mentioned, we do a preparation uh, for your final assignment, uh, which is usually about the module 10, 11 on the course. So as a tutor, I will follow the work in the reading material very closely, but in particular, bring to life each of the week's reading in that tutorial session where you get together with your uh, your peers, your fellow students, and tr really have a session for yourselves to embed into ground and improve your learning and reflections on what you've read in the week. Some people do just do the course just by reading the material, and that's great, and they pass the assignment at the end, but most people enjoy doing the reading and attending that one and a half hour tutorial once a week, which brings to life the reading and can sometimes clarify things that were a little bit confusing when you were reading it on your iPad or on your computer. At the end of the course, uh, there is an assignment and uh, the assignment uh, is a kind of a case study based on a real life uh, worked example. We'll ask you to pick an organisation of your choice uh, and we'll go through uh, a, an assignment, a practical assignment based on the things you've learned on the course. Uh, it's built, it's broken down into two parts. Uh, firstly, you'll be asked to undertake a critical analysis and evaluation of a complex organisational situation in the context of an integrated care partnership. 
And in this, your initial analysis and evaluation will focus on information systems and decision making tools that we've covered in the course. And uh, this will provide background for any subsequent uh, analysis of the improvements required. So in a nutshell, you'll look at a problem, you'll uh, address some key questions that were posed to you, and you'll have to critically analyse and discuss what you found, what the good bits are and where the bad bits are and the areas that you could improve. The final part of the assignment is actually picking up on the areas that you would suggest that need improvement uh, and suggest process improvements based on the, the, uh, the arguments and analysis you did in part one. So, in summary, improving uh, your decision making skills is a life skill. And it's a life skill that will improve both uh, your work as well as your personal life. But in work, we tend to get faced with some very large, meaty and weighty challenges. And therefore, this course goes through a structured 10 and 11 weeks where we teach you all aspects of decision making uh, and ways that you can improve your decision making. And at the end of the course, there's a practical worst work based assignment looking at an integrated care system where you have an opportunity to apply what you've learned in the course. Hopefully at the end of it, you'll find it enjoyable and hopefully at the end of it, you'll find it rewarding. And finally, I look forward to meeting you in future courses in the next few years and I wish you all the best for the future. Bye. My name Hi, hi both. Um, so thanks for joining us and to, to listen to those pre-recorded sessions from both Ian and Paul. As I mentioned, um, they couldn't join us um, live on the call today. So if you have got any further questions you want around these, these two particular mo modules that you want to um, put to our tutors, then please drop those in the chat here um, today, or you could uh, drop Becky Vine an, an email and her contact details are on there. If you haven't got any, um, if you have got any questions generally about the qualification, um, Nick uh, Passmore has joined the call today. Now, Nick's our Academy Development Executive, and he's here to support you pre putting your application in. So, if you have got questions in general about the qualification around sort of time scales. Um, uh, about support with submitting your application form, um, which modules are running when and which ones you want to consider doing and a little bit more detail around um, the topics that are covered, then then please reach out to Nick. His contact details are on the screen now. Um, similarly, if you have got a question, please take yourself off mute if you're comfortable to do so and, and um, uh, ask a question and we will try to answer it. Um, and if you haven't got any questions, um, we will end the session. So um, I'll just leave it for a couple of minutes. If, uh, Catherine, Donna, if either of you have got um, a question you wanted to ask us um, about today's session or, or in general, really, any, any questions about the qualification? I haven't got a question, but um, thanks very much for all these sessions because they're really informative and really helpful. Thank you, Catherine. I appreciate that. Um, I'm glad that they've been of benefit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd like to echo that. Apologies for joining late. Um, uh, no problem, Donna. You have a very good excuse, so I'm sorry to hear <laughs> your news. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I suppose we were lucky. We were, we were there when the money passed. So, um, oh. but, but, thank you. I, I've got no, no further questions. No further questions. Wow. Well. Thank you, though, both for joining the call today. Um, as you probably know, um, all of these sessions are live on the One NHS um, Finance um, website. So if you do want to look back on any of the, the recordings, uh, any of the sessions we've done previously, you can look online. Um, over the next couple of weeks, the plan is going to be to run another two sessions. We're hoping we can get Northampton University to come along to one of the sessions and talk about the MBA. Um, and we'd also, we've also spoken to some of our former students who are going to join us as well. And I, they're, they're really great to 
to, to speak to. Obviously, we we could tell you what our experiences are of the qualification and why we've developed it and, and the content. But I think it's quite great if you can hear from a former student or a current student who studied on the programme, why they studied, what they've got out of it, um, that side of the thing, um, how they manage their time, etc. Um, so thank you both for joining the session today. Um, we we'll look forward to welcoming you back to um, the future HFMA Academy sessions. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye. Yeah, you do. Have a good